Greetings, BUSN 1360 Software Applications for Business. I'm Dr. McGrory, and welcome to Excel Chapter 3, which is all about charts. We're going to look at a lot of different types of charts and a lot of different settings, and you're really going to see the power that Excel has to demonstrate your data visually. A lot of times we can look at long columns of numbers and uh, multiple columns of numbers, and we just don't really get the meaning of those numbers. But when we express that in a chart, things just pop out to us. Now, as we go throughout this chapter, I'll give you a couple tips and tricks and things that I've learned. You're going to see a lot of different types of charts. Don't be overwhelmed by this. Some of this you're going to use remember because you'll use it and the more you use it you will remember it. Maybe you have a chemistry class or a history class or something where you're charting data and so you'll remember that. If you don't use this for a little while it will be easy to forget certain steps but there's still power in this because you will know that it's possible. And when you know something is possible, that leads you to say, I just need to look up those steps or brush up just a little bit, and then you can use Excel as a powerful tool. So don't let yourself get overwhelmed. Now here's another point, and I struggle with this. There is a lot of detail in this. When you are doing graphs and charts um, on your own, you get to be very creative. And, you know, I personally like that. I can really get caught up. Uh, you know, just changing colors and formats and styles, not just to play with pretty colors, but because I go, oh, wow, that data really pops when I do this or when I do that. Also, you tend to have a target audience in mind, and so as you do the artistic part of this, it's kind of fun to really uh, do certain things that you know will help the target audience. Here, in the grader, it's a lot about following instructions. And I know, because I've been doing this for a long time, that when I'm trying to talk my way through this and communicate with you, which I love doing, really easy for me to drop a step or to do something kind of more the way I like it um, and not, I deviate from the instructions. So I'm going to try not to do this. But I will be honest and I will tell you this is my second time going through this with you because as I looked at my first submission, I realized what I was doing, that I, I was getting caught up in some of this and that um, it just led me to, to too many mistakes. So let's do this together and I'm going to try to save you some time and increase your learning and help you really with the details of this step. I want you to get the learning out of it and I do want you to have fun with this. But I also want you to be able to, you know, get your good score on that grader. I'm for you. I'm cheering for you. So let's do that. Let's get started. Now, you know, and I hopefully you already have, downloaded your files and organized them neatly into an Excel 3 folder. This is where we're working. When we go to submit, you're going to really double, triple, quadruple check yourself to make sure that you're submitting the correct file. The most common error is submitting the wrong file, especially because we're so far into this now. When I open this folder, uh, oops, where is it? Popped up on my other screen. Here it is. I've got just the two files, the instruction and my working file. I've already opened the instructions and I, I want you to kind of uh, look at the reason why you're doing some of these things. The simulator is great preparation and I love it. I especially love that you can click learning aids and then do the practice and it guides you through those steps. But sometimes when it marks that question as complete, you don't get the opportunity to really look at what you just did, which reinforces why you're doing it. So we're going to do that with the grader, but we begin with that by saying, why are we doing this? What's the project description? You are an academic advisor, it says, for the School of Computing at a university. You researched the job outlook that indicated the number of jobs in 2019 and estimated the number of jobs in 2029. You'll prepare several charts, that's very true, to help you identify the trends. So that's why you're doing this. You're doing job outlook, job forecast. Great tool. Now you know step one, which is I need to start Excel, open the file. So I'm going to minimize these instructions. Here's my Excel file. I'm just double clicking and it opened. For some reason everything is going to my second screen. There we go. 
and I have two spreadsheets. I want to look at that, two worksheets. One is called Outlook. Let me zoom in so we can go ahead and start to see that. Now you see these hashtags and you know that that simply means the column is not wide enough. Now I'm not going to adjust it because the grader has not instructed me to do so, but if I click in that cell, of course, I can see right, that there's values, there's legitimate values in that cell. I have a second tab, new jobs. Here's my what number of new jobs and it's this one column. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on that just so you can see it. Some simple information. We're going to we're going to make the information pop from the data by looking at some graphs. So, we've done this. Let's go I'm going to let me go back to the Outlook tab. That was our first worksheet. And now let me go back to the instructions. So step number one is complete. On to step number two. It says you want to start by creating a clustered column chart. You'll focus on the first four jobs included in the list. In the Outlook sheet, we're going to use the Insert tab to create a clustered column chart for the range, A5 through D5. And we're going to cut the chart and paste it into cell H1. That's going to bring up something to talk about. And then we're going to set the height and width of the chart. So let's do that. Into Excel we go. We're on the correct tab, the Outlook tab. And we're going to select, and that's what we do first when we're creating a chart. We always begin by first selecting what we want charted. So it says A5 through A9, and in the simulation, they actually taught you something that's kind of cool, which is that you can either click here, A5, and drag through D9, or you could type it in the name box. So if you're having trouble with that selection, just go up here and type that in the name box. With that selected, make sure I've got it A5 through D, oh, D9, look at that. I've selected everything, A5 through D9. Okay, that's all. It look, That looks a little funny, doesn't it? And, and so I got confused there, but watch me on that. A5 through D9. And we're going to make a chart. So I'm going to go to Insert. And it said it want, wanted a clustered column. So when I look at my different chart types, this one is a column column or bar, but if I click on that drop down, what I'm looking for, see how it says clustered column? That's what I want. And every time I hover over one of these, it tells me more. See the different types? Even 3D, kind of cool. But we want this very first one, clustered column. I'm going to click that. As I look at this, it's floating above my worksheet. It is not in a cell. It was never inserted into a cell. This is an object and this object has objects inside of it. And so I want to point this out to you because it can be very important. How do you know what is selected? As you work with charts, this is a critical thing to understand. First, look at the dots. Where are these dots? Because they tell you what is selected. Right now my chart is selected. If I click inside the chart, I can click anywhere, but like maybe on top of another object like this bar right here, do you notice that my chart still has the dots, meaning it's still selected, but I've drilled down into this object to select, look at this, every single one of these orange columns is selected. I see the dots, see that? So I have to be careful because as I click, I might actually start selecting things inside my chart. So I just need to be aware of that. If that happens, um, remember what is selected will be affected. So you got to kind of take great care with that. I, maybe I just need to shake some of these things loose. I don't want all that stuff selected. Then what you do is you find a safe area. If you're still working in the chart, but you just don't want that selected, then you try to find a safe area of the chart. You know, some place that's kind of blank. I try to go near the corners, right? Oftentimes, like up here, and I'll just click and I look to make sure there's no dots inside. So you may hear me say, click away somewhere. And that's really what I'm saying is click into a safe space 
on this chart so that nothing inside the chart is selected. In fact, if you don't want the chart selected, you can click inside of a cell and you'll notice that the dots around the outside of the chart are now gone. Now I do want my chart selected, so I've clicked it one time in a safe spot, right? I'm trying to, I'm not clicking here to select it, I'm clicking kind of in a safe spot. And they told me that they want me to cut the chart and paste it in cell H1. Well, one thing I want you to recognize right away is this is not in any cell. By cutting and pasting it, we are simply moving it to hover above the location where they want it to be very specifically. So that's why they're asking us to use the cut and paste. I have the chart selected. Um, we can just use our cut and paste commands. Here's cut. I'm going to click in cell H1 and I'm going to paste. Now, that chart is hovering above cell H1 as it is hovering above many cells. It's not actually in that cell. It's just a location. But that's exactly what I wanted to do. Now, I'm not done yet. It says I need to set the height and width of the chart. So I still have the chart selected. And as I look at my ribbons, I have extra ribbons. I have a chart design ribbon, and I have a format ribbon. Let's see, to set the height, let me try format. And sure enough, down here towards the end, height, they want 3.5, enter, width, 5.3, enter. Let me double check. That looks like that instruction is done. Let's save that. Let's go back to the instructions. Step number two is done. I'm going to go on to step three. Let me move the instructions up so we can see better. Step three. Next, you want to create a recommended chart to depict the number of people for each job and the estimated number of new people by 2029. That's, those were our data points, right? In the Outlook sheet, it tells us we're going to use this record. We're going to let Excel recommend the chart feature to create a recommended chart for this range. Okay change it to a stacked bar chart, so we're going to see another type of chart, and move it to a brand new sheet all of its own. So let's do that. Let's go back to Excel. And I want to add on to some of the knowledge that you learned in your simulation. In the simulation, they taught you that you could click in this name box, and you could type, for example, A5 through, and what did they say, B12. Now, I want to also select D5 through D12, and you know that you could hold your control key down on your keyboard. So select the first range, hold your control key down, and select the second range. If you're struggling with that, I wanted you to know that you can just simply put a comma after that first range, and then type your second range, D5 through, and what did they say, D12. And if I press the Enter key, do you see how both ranges are selected? And so that's very important if you're struggling. Now, what do I typically do? I typically use the Control key. Select the first range, Control, select the second range. But if you're struggling, now you have this as an option. Our data is selected, which is always what we do first when we're going to create a chart. We're going to click Insert. It said to use Recommended Chart. Well, here's Recommended Chart. And they're recommending, for example, a clustered bar, their second recommendation, stacked bar. Now, what do we want? Oh, that's what we want. Change it to a stacked bar chart. That's exactly what we want. So stacked bar. And I'm going to click OK. Isn't that nice how you can really see the data? So the blue data is the 2019. The orange data is the number of jobs. And I can see, look in this one, it looks a little negative there, right? But I can see proportions of that. Now, see how this object, this chart, is even floating above my other chart. By the way, if you need to move a chart around on the same page, put your mouse in an area of the chart that's a safe area, so not on top of the title, not on top of some of this other stuff. Put it in a safe area press and drag. I'm keeping my mouse button held down and see how I can move it around. 
Now they tell us we're going to move it to a sheet all by itself, so a brand new tab down here, and I can do that. I've got my chart selected, chart design, move chart. It says right now it's an object in Outlook. I'm going to click New Sheet, and they told me to call this Bar Chart. Let's double check. This is a stacked bar chart, and OK. Took a minute there. There, that and isn't that nice? So now I can send this to my boss, for example. They can look at the details real clearly on this page. But then, if they want to see the chart here, they can see kind of a small chart, and that's fine. It displays what they need to know. But if they really want to see it all by itself, it's very clear. It's larger. If I print this, this will print on one page all by itself. So that's pretty cool. I've done that. Let's save that. Let's go back to the instructions. That was the end of step three, on to step four. For the third chart, it tells us, you want to see what percentage each job contributes to the total. Well, whenever we're talking about a piece contributing to the whole, what kind of chart is that going to be? A pie chart. So we're going to display the new jobs worksheet, so we're changing worksheets. We're going to select range A4 through B9, and we're going to use a quick analysis to create that pie chart. Move the pie chart to a chart sheet called pie chart. And special note for our Mac users, so be aware of that. Let's go back to Excel. And really important here, they said change to the new jobs. Here's my new jobs uh, worksheet. And select A4 through B9. OK. Now notice when I have this selected, I have a menu item. And you're used to that from the autofill. This is the quick analysis button. So when I click this, look at, look at what it's giving me. It says, do you want me to format this really quickly for you? I can look at that. It's doing what they call conditional formatting. Very cool. We're not going to do that now, but very cool, right? Charts, of course, and we are going to look at that. Totals, it can add some totals really quickly for us. Here's table formats and spark lines. We're going to do that at the end of this grader. You're going to love spark lines. I love them. They've been around for a couple versions, uh, I think. And um, anyway, we're going to go back to charts. And what did they want us to do for this one? We're going to use a quick analysis to create a pie chart. Boom, there we go. That's pretty good looking, isn't it? What's my biggest chunk here? If I hover over it, it tells me software developers. Very handy if you can't. Those colors can be hard to see, especially if you print this to a black and white printer, for example. So we're going to look at, at some ways to address that. We need to move this. Now, this is selected still. Chart design, move chart. We're going to put it on a sheet of its own. And we're going to call it, what else but pie chart. OK. And see how it added it? Now, it added it before new jobs, just like it added bar chart before Outlook. So it added it before the tables that it was based on. You can, you can rearrange those tabs if you want. Just kind of an interesting uh, thing to observe. I think we have finished this instruction. Let's save that. And let's go back to the instructions. So that was step four. On to step five. The last chart will depict the number of new jobs and the related percentage increase. Because the two data types are different, we're going to use a combo chart. So let's look at our data in the Outlook sheet. And look at this. It says create a combo chart with, this is all one descriptor, clustered column line on secondary axis. And then we're going to move that to its own worksheet. All righty. Let's go to Excel. And they want us on the Outlook tab, A5 through A12. So we're picking this first column. And then I am going to use our practice of control. And what did they want? D5 through E12. D5 through E12. OK, lifting up off control. 
So now I have the labels selected and I have the data selected. Now before I even graph, will you look at that with, with me for just one moment? Look at the difference in those numbers. You have 8,000 and you're going to graph that alongside 5%. Now what is 5%? 0 0.05. How are you going to fit all that on the same graph? 0 0.05 next to 8,000. 0.22, which is 22%, next to 316,000. Woo, that graph is going to, it's going to be hard to see these little bitty numbers. I don't know that we'd be able to see them at all. This is the reason that we know we need to do some kind of combo graph. That's the tip off that we need to do a combo graph. So I'm going to go to, I've got my data selected, always the first thing before I make a, I'm sorry, I say graph, I mean chart. Um, so insert, I'm going to look over here at my charts. And when I look at these buttons, you see this one, it's kind of got two charts going on. That's the one, insert combo. And what did they want us? Clustered column. Well, this one's a clustered column, but it just says line. It says line on secondary axis. That's the second one. Now, I'm going to click that. You can look at that third one if you want, but I'm going to click that. And what does that mean, the secondary axis? Well, here is the first data, and it is expressed as a, ball, as a column, right? See how there's like my 316,000. Well, what is this line? Because remember, that's like 5%. Let me move this over a little. 5% and 22%. So these points of the line are actually the values represented on this secondary value axis. And because of that, we can see them. Otherwise, I mean, this one doesn't even go below 50,000. I wouldn't even be able to see those. It would look like a straight line going across there. But see how much easy, much better, how much easier this is for us to view. All right, uh, we're not done yet. We still have the graph selected. We're going to move it to its own worksheet. And what are we going to call that one but combo, combo chart. Looks good? Okay. Yeah, much better. And see how it, it, interesting, it put it right next to the spreadsheet that it's associated with, the data that it's associated with, and even before bar chart. Again, in the real world, if you need to drag these into different positions because it makes more sense for your presentation, for your report, absolutely, it does not affect the graph at all. Save that. Go back to the instructions. That was step five. Let me scroll down. Let me get steps six and seven, and then we're going to be on to the next page. So let's do this, and let's be really careful with this. It is important to replace the default chart titles with actual descriptive chart titles. Absolutely. We agree with that, right? So we're going to start with a combo, and I'll, we'll just read through these one at a time as we do them. So combo chart. Let's go to that. We're currently on the combo chart, so that's good. And let's see. It says that we want to type the new chart title name. This is where selecting is very important and can have different types of impact. I see chart title up here. If I click one time, whoops, well, one time is the chart. If I click a second time, there we go, do you see that the entire chart title text box is selected? That's what we want. That's what we want. If I were to click again, do you see even when my mouse is over that, how it turns into an eye beam? Well, if I click again, my insertion point is in there. And I can start typing in there, and I can type in the chart title. And there's really no problem with that. Um, but the way that they show us in the simulation, the way that they're telling us to do this, is that they want us to just have the chart title text box selected. Now here's how I'm going to do that. I'm going to click away somewhere so that I'm not editing that box. You see how the dots are out here now? Now I'm going to click one time, chart title. See how it's selected? 
and with it selected I'm just simply going to start typing and they want me to type number of new jobs by 2029. Notice that the chart title looks text box looks unaffected but if I really look it's up here in the formula bar and that's where they wanted us to enter this I can either press my enter key because I've been typing or I can click my green check box whichever you prefer when I do that that's when Excel updates that title box so far so good we've got more to do because we're gonna format this now again what is selected but the entire text box. So when I have this entire text box selected, whatever is selected is going to be affected. So I'm going to format the text box, which is going to format everything inside of the text box. Let's go to Home. It says to apply bold. And then I'm going to apply this theme color here, I believe. Yeah, black text one font color. Pick that. And there it is. Now that's a good looking uh, chart title. I like that. We're not through with the step but I'm just going to save just because I think I've done some good work there hopefully. Next they tell us to go to the pie chart. So down at the bottom pie chart. Once again we're going to change the chart title. So I'm going to click only until I have the dots going around the box, no insertion point inside that. If you click too many times and you get that flashing bar inside there, click somewhere safe and come back and click one time on chart title. With chart title selected, I'm going to type new computer hyphen related jobs by 2029 and I'm going to see that appear up here on the formula bar. Do watch your spelling, uh, make sure everything looks good. When I press enter, it updates my chart title. Now again, I've got some formatting to do. I still have this box selected. They are telling me to bold. On this one, they also tell me to change the point size to 18. They did not say that for the previous step. And they also want to make sure that the style of this is black text one. So make sure you've got that. I'm going to save that again. We're not done, but I'm going to save that because then we're going to go on to the bar chart. So I'm going to click the bar chart. And again, we're going to select the chart title box and I'm going to type projected number of jobs by 2029. And as soon as I press the enter key, my chart title is updated, so I'm going to go ahead and save. I think we're done with that one. And then we're going to go to the column chart. Now the column chart, recall, is this was what? This was the uh, clustered column. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry. I'm getting confused here. This is my only other chart. Uh, for this one, I'm going to click chart title and number of jobs 2019 and 2029. Press enter and we still have some formatting to do and that box is still selected. So bold. Now this time they want dark blue font color. I believe that's one of, yeah. Right here in standard colors, second to the end, dark blue. Save that. That was the end of step six. A little bit long. Hopefully no mistakes. Okay, I tried to be very careful there. Let's go back to the instructions. Step seven. You want to add a value access title to clarify the column chart. So with the column chart selected, we're going to add a primary horizontal axis title. Those are all keywords there. Primary horizontal axis title. And we're actually going to enter into that the phrase job titles. Uh, then we're going to do a little bit of formatting to that. Okay, let's go back to Excel. Oops, if I can do, there we go. Back to Excel. So here's my column chart. When I'm going to add something to this column chart, I have a little plus sign up here, and that's associated with the object. So click my plus sign, 
and they want me to add a horizontal axis title. I see axis title, and when I hover over it, it already starts kind of trying to show me what it can do. I'm not interested in that. I want this arrow and click on that arrow. That arrow only appears when you hover over axis title. Now, your submenu may appear to the right. In my case, it ran out of room, so it is appearing over here to the left, and that's fine. It wants uh, primary horizontal, so I'm going to click that. Make sure you get a check mark in there. And here it is. It appeared right down here. To close this box, I click the little plus sign, and it goes away. So axis title, it wants us to put job titles. So again, I have that selected. See that text box selected? And I'm just going to start typing job. And you see it up in the formula bar? Titles. When I press Enter, it updated down here on the graph. And it wants us to apply that dark blue color again to that. So it's still selected. Come up here to the font. And I want dark blue. Okay, did I complete all those steps? And hopefully correctly, I'm going to save. Let's go back to the instructions. Page 2. Adjusting the value axis settings will make the axis labels easier to read on the bar chart. So we're going to a different one now. We're going to bar chart. Really have to keep up with this. You know what throws me on this is they didn't capitalize it. I mean, we actually labeled that uh, worksheet tab bar chart. So anyway, bar chart. We're going to select the bar chart and we're going to change the maximum bound for the value access. In other words, we don't want it to go above. What is this? I need to put commas in here just so I can see. 1,800,000. We don't want it to go above that. And, and we want to display this in units of a thousand. Okay, so instead of displaying this part here, we want to tell Excel, look, you just displayed this part, the 1800, and we'll understand that we're talking about thousands, that it's really a million, in other words. Okay, so we're going to get Excel to help us with that. So we have a couple things we have to do here. We need to set this maximum bound, and we need to change the units to display in thousands. And one more thing, the actual title, that thousands that we're going to display, they want that to be in a dark blue font. So multiple pieces here. Got to pay attention to all of it. Um, I, we can undo that if you, if you want. It's just I just did that to the instructions so that you could see. Let's go back to Excel. Bar chart. Here's my bar chart. See up here at the top is I can click Format. Right? Absolutely. I, what I would probably do more in real life is right click. So in this safe place, what I would be doing is right clicking. And then I would come down here and say I want to format, for example, the, the chart area. What that does is it opens this little pane over here on the side. Now, alternatively, format, and I want you to notice this, format selection. That is the same. That would open this little dialog box. Now you have multiple options inside of this. First of all, notice that there's chart options here and then there's even text options. So even more things that you can do to control just the text. I point this out because it's easy to look at just the beginning menu that they offer you in this dialog box, this panel, and overlook that there are so many settings in here. So there's tons that you can do. But what do they want us to do? We're affecting this bar chart and we're not concerned with things like the fill or the border. We're not even concerned about some of the shading or this last little part here is the text. What we're looking at here is very specifically, things associated with the chart, the entire chart. They wanted us to format the value axis settings. Now, you probably already know value, and you see the value axis down there. But what if I'm stumped at this point? I want to tell you something else about up here with this format. We looked at this format selection. Look above it. It says chart area, and so this panel is formatting chart area. That's what this is 
the selection. If I click on this drop down box, I can actually choose out of this the value axis. Now, see how there's dots down here? I can either use this to select what I want, or if I click on something, like what if I click this? Vertical, okay? So you can either click and it tells you what is selected, that can be really helpful, or you can use this to select. So I want the horizontal value axis down here. You see that that's selected. Now look over here. Our panel has changed because it's to format whatever we have selected. Okay, so with this selected, now look at my options. I still have these, which has changed just a little bit, axis option and text option, but I have more icons. I have this extra. This is the one we're going to work with a lot. So see this axis options, and I'm going to expand this. So what did I do? I selected what I needed, and then you can either right click on top of that or else you can click format selection. That's going to open the side panel. Now here's my bounds and these are automatically generated right now. You can even see that down here it says automatic but I want to set a maximum access value and it guessed right now, see how I changed that? It said, and isn't this weird? 2E6. You know what that means? That means 2 to the 6th exponent. In other words, 2 times 10 to the 6th power. That's what that's trying to express. Kind of interesting stuff you bring into this from math class. It doesn't matter. Don't get upset or confused by that. Just select that because they told us that they wanted the upward bound and we're going to type 1, 8. Now make sure you count the zeros here. 1, 2, three, four, five zeros, and then press enter. Here's what I want you to see. We set a maximum boundary, and so there's not as much gap there. But we're not done, because it also said that we want the access value to be displayed in thousands. So maximum access value is currently none, I want it to be in thousands. Now look at my axis right now, and I want that to be thousands. It added the little word thousands so that we know, and it took off the zeros so it decluttered our graph. It makes it look a little cleaner. All we did is we changed the maximum bound and we changed the display unit to display in thousands. Now we're actually not quite done yet because still on this bar chart, they want us to pick this display word of thousands, and they want us to apply that dark blue color. See how it's dark blue? Save. Back to the instructions. So those were three steps. They were kind of big steps, and now we're going to move on to step nine. Show percentages for pie slices. So now we're talking about the pie. Uh, showing percentages for pie slices is important. It helps us understand uh, which job contributes what percentage of the overall new jobs. So we're going to select the pie chart and we're going to add data labels. What kind of data labels? Something called inside end. That describes the position of those data labels. We're going to see that. We're going to display those percentage labels, and we're going to remove the data, uh, the value data labels, and then we're going to do some formatting. Okay, it's so much easier to do than to verbally explain. So let's jump in and do it. Here we go to Excel, and we're going to the pie chart. Now, this is a beautiful piece of pie, but obviously this is the biggest percentage, but it's, you know, I have to hover over it in order to see what those percentages are, which is cool, by the way, isn't it? I can hover, and Excel gives me all this detail. But what if this was printed? Then the person can't just hover over it. So we need to be able to put those data labels in there. Now, we are adding something, correct? So when I add something to my chart, I'm going to click this little plus sign. Here's data labels, but I'm not just checking the box. I want to see what my options are. There's the arrow, click that little arrow. 
here are the different types and as I hover over each one of these data labels do you see them displaying in the pie in the chart I should say and look at that best fit had to put that little number 8000 outside of the label because it wouldn't really fit you see how some data labels are hard to read look at the thir 316,000 I can barely read that black text on top of that large piece of blue pie it gets lost in there you might want to do data callouts lots of e and even more options but they told us inside end ah, I'm trying to click that what has always um, befuddled me with this is normally after you click something and make a selection menu boxes like this would go away in this case it doesn't go away until you click the plus sign that has always befuddled me maybe you too so hopefully that's helpful now we're not done yet it says we want to display percentages right now we're displaying values so I need to select these I can pick whichever one I want just click one of them but click it only one time when you click it only one time it's going to put dots around every single one of these data labels and that's what you want you want them all selected if you accidentally double click you're going to select only one of those data labels what do you do if that happens click away someplace and then just come back and click it again just one time now as I look over here I've got my fill bucket that's borders that type of thing I can look across all my special things that I can do but we're really working with this option here this data label option here's this little triangle click inside of that and it expands and what I can see as I look through here is all the different things that I can display the series name the category and what they have told us is that we're gonna click inside percentage and see how it's displaying both now that's cool if you like that but they want us to re remove value deselected value we're not done yet but all we did was you know bring up op open our format panel and then we made sure we went to this very last label option we deselected value added percentage and now we're gonna format to format I just am going to use the tools I'm familiar with they are selected that's key everything selected bold and then we need 18 point now a little easier to read now I think looks good save that back to the instructions so that was step 9 on to step 10 you want to apply a texture fill to the chart now we're getting fancy to create a softer appearance around the pie chart we're going to apply something called blue tissue paper uh, it's a texture fill to the chart area on the pie now folks I'll give you just a little word of caution here and you already know this we are exploring the features of Excel and so we're going to do you know some of this fancy decorating in your business professional career for whatever you're doing don't get so fancy that you're distracting from your data and you want it to be appropriate and you want it to be professional but you want it to be clear easy to read not distracting and always think about what if this is printed what if it is put on a copier will it still be legible can I still read it so let's go back to Excel now I currently have my data labels uh, selected I really just want my chart area so what is the chart area if I am unsure I can go to format and remember this is a great selector selector tool I can just pick chart area and when I look for the dots it's the whole thing isn't it the whole chart area is selected now my formatting panel which I how do I get that I get that from over here it brings up this panel and and all it did it just moved me over here to the paint bucket if you noticed a change there but I, my panel is still open and so they want me to apply a textured fill well that's good that they took me to this paint bucket click on that we're concerned with the fill now look at all these fill options well right now it's automatic 
and I can pick a color if I want so that I have a fill color involved. Um, there's patterns, there's gradients, there's solid fills, and you can explore all of these. But the one that we're interested in is a texture. It's really kind of a picture. So click on picture. Now, ooh, there's a picture. Look, that, that looks very nice. But my question is, is it relevant? Maybe if this is a fabric store or some kind of weave, I just have to make sure it doesn't take away from the information I'm conveying. I do need to click this one, and they've got this default picture. But look look down through here at all these options. I can insert a picture, maybe have a big corporate logo back there. That would be cool. I can adjust the transparency of that picture. But it, this is what I'm looking for. It's a texture. This is a texture we're talking about. Click on that. See all these different textures? To me, these are still pictures. It's a little confusing. Um, I feel like in the older version, this was a little uh, easier to cipher, to understand. But nevertheless, this is how you do it. Do you see blue tissue paper here? Click on that. There we go. Kind of a soft, it looks like somebody wadded up some tissue paper and maybe even put paint on in that way, right? But there it is. We just want to make sure it still looks professional, that it would look good if we were to photocopy or print this, right? So anyway, so there we go. And let's see, step 10, that's it. Save that. Back to our instructions. Step 11, it is best practice to add alt text for the chart for accessibility compliance. And this is the, the alt text that we're going to do. So very quickly, what is alt text? If you are using a screen reader, it is what reads instead of the chart because the screen reader doesn't know what to say when it encounters a picture. So you have to tell it what you want it to say. So it says, we're going to do this. This has become so important that they've actually put it on the right-click menu in this 2021 version. So if you're using an older version of Excel, you have to hunt a little deeper to find this alt text. Let's go to Excel, and we'll show you. And oops, and I'm sorry, which chart were they talking about? Uh, pie chart. Okay, so we're still on pie. Just got to make sure. And here's what I'm going to do. Now, we could probably find this under text options, maybe. have to kind of hunt around for it to find it. I'm going to tell you how I'm going to find it. I was just seeing if I could help some folks find that really quickly. I'm going to put my mouse in a safe area of the chart, and I'm going to right click. And as I look down through this menu, what you're going to see is the alt text. Now this is true for this 2021 version. If you are trying to kind of go through the class with an older version of Excel, remember you can upgrade, you've got access to that software, I've given you all those options, but the alt text is a property, so go under properties and you'll find alt text, okay? I'm going to click that, here's my alt text. They told me exactly what to type and it says displays the percentage of new computer jobs by job title. Make sure I type the period at the end of that sentence. It's important to those screen readers. So I'm going to do that now. And save. And that was step 11. So let's go back to the instructions. Let me scroll down a little bit. Step 12. You want to emphasize one job category with a different fill color and by setting it apart from the rest of the pie. So it says select the computer systems analyst pie slice. We're going to apply red solid fill color only to that one slice and then we're going to explode it. This is going to be fun. You're going to enjoy this. Let's go back to Excel. Now we're looking for Computer Systems Analyst, which they say is this orange slice, I believe, yes. Hover your mouse over it, it will tell you. Remember, it tells you which series, so you can see all these. But it's this one, this 10%. With my mouse over that one, I'm going to click on it. Now where are your dots? Because your dots tell you what is selected. I see dots on every slice of the pie. So if I start trying to apply fill color right now, I'm going to color in my entire pie as one solid red pie. So click again to pick only that one piece of the pie. 
I will emphasize this is not a double click. What you have to do is click, pause, click. Because what you're doing is you're trying to get Excel to understand. I, I have the chart selected. I have the pie selected. Now I want the piece of the pie selected. You're going deeper and deeper and deeper into this object. And so you need to give Excel just a moment to think. So it's click, pause, click. Now I can see by the dots that only this one piece of pie is selected. Well, let's go to format for the chart. Here's shape fill. And I think they wanted, did they want dark red? No, just red. They want just red. And there it is. And it applied only to that piece of the pie I had selected. But then they told us to explode it. Well, how do you, what does that mean? How do you explode it? You grab this piece of the pie. So what I mean by grab is you put your mouse over it, press the mouse button down, press and drag. And I'm just dragging it out just a little bit. See how that emphasizes that piece of the pie? It kind of says, hey, look at me, right? I'm exploded out here. You can, if you, if you had the entire pie selected and you drag any one piece, the entire pie will explode. Sometimes that's helpful. Sometimes people want that. If you do that by accident, control Z. Control Z is the undo command. And what you need to do is click again to select that one piece of the pie. They did tell us to explode it, but they didn't tell us to explode it arbitrarily. They told us to explode it very precisely by 10%. So I need to format this, right? So I have this piece of the pie selected. How do you want to do this? You can click on Format Selection. See how my panel changed? Or you could right click if you wanted and then say Format Data Point. Either way, I tend to be a right clicker, but I want to make sure that you're seeing these options that are helpful. Now, I happen to explode mine a little too much, 16%. So I'm just going to use this, see point explosion. And you can type in there 10 if you want. I'm just going to use my arrow. 10%, so that's a 10% explosion. Isn't that cool? And look at that, it even says enter a value from 0 to 400%. You can explode that piece way on out there. <laughs> All right, save that. Is that funny? I found that funny. Y'all found that funny too. Let's go back. Let's go back to Word. And we are now, we just finished exploding our pie by 10%. That was step 12. Let's go back to, or let's continue on now to step 13. You want to give more contrast to the bar chart. So we're changing to the bar chart. Therefore, you will apply a different chart style to the bar chart. Select the bar chart and apply style 10. Okay, let's go back to Excel. And we want to make sure we go to bar chart. This is our bar chart. And we're interested in styles. Now, one thing I will point out very quickly is that, and that I'm sure you've noticed, is there are tons of styles. There's shape styles, there, there's word art styles. If you were on your home tab because you were using the fill, for example, from here, then you may see this styles and you might go, oh my God, it's not available to me, it's not working. I get that, I get that. Because this is kind of where we're used to seeing styles. But when we are working with a chart or really any object, we really want to focus on those tabs that are specific to that object. So if I click on, for example, chart design, I mean, you could click on format and you'll see shape styles and word art styles. But if I click on chart design, this is where I'm going to see what's relevant, which is my chart styles. So I'm going to expand these. They wanted style 10. How many are there? There's 11 total, so it must be this one. I click that. There we go. That's style 10. How does that look? Does it look okay? Did I follow the instructions correctly? I hope so. I think so. Let's save that. We never do it because we think we're wrong, do we? We make mistakes because we think we're doing it correctly. That was step 13. On to step 14. 
you decide to exclude the number of jobs to simplify the column chart. So it says here we're going to select the column chart. Now column chart, we got to make sure we go to the column chart. And we're going to change the data source. And we're going to, looks like, not include as many columns. So instead of expanding all the way to D, we're going to update that and just change it to column C. Then, uh oh, look at this. Then we're going to switch the data series and the series and the categories so that those axes are different. We're going to flip flop those. This in particular is one that when you did the simulation, it really helps you with the how to, doesn't it, folks? I, I hope it does. Because if you don't under, know the how to steps, you do learning aids, you do practice, it'll guide you right through those steps. But as soon as you finish those steps, it says question complete. And so you don't get to see what happened. So now you do because you're in this real world environment. That's why these graders are so important. That's why we do them together. So let's go back to Excel. We're still, we're working on step 14. And step 14 said we need to go to the column chart. So not this one. Let's go back to our Outlook uh, worksheet. And this is our column chart. Now it's still selected. If not, just want to click on it one time. And with it selected, notice that I'm still on chart design tab. So you want to have that one. And as I look at the my buttons on chart design, these options, select data. And here's my dialog box. I'm just going to kind of move it so that you can see everything. It's showing me right now, look at there's those marching ants again. And it's saying this is what you are charting over here. It, it's got that. There, right? And it's even showing me, okay, here's what is my, you know, my legend here is the 2019 and 2029 and number of jobs. And I'm showing all of that. And then here are my labels. Can I move that over? Computer network, you know, it's pulling it from here. And so it's showing me all that. It says, this is what's going on. I said, okay. But what we were told is this is cluttered. And it is cluttered, isn't it? So instead of this going from A5 to D5, we're just going to update this formula to go to C5. So can we look at the formula? Do you recognize all the parts of it? Most of it. I think you recognize most of it. You recognize a range, A5 through D9. You recognize that. You even recognize the dollar signs. You recognize that, for example, we need to change, and I'm going to do this now. Instead of D9, I need to change this to C9. What you may not recognize is the Outlook, where it says Outlook, and it has an exclamation point. That is how we refer to the worksheet name. So if you are trying to do a calculation, and you have a value that you need on another page of your work, workbook, don't retype it. Because then you're going to have to retype it every time it changes. And you don't want to do that. You just look at this. All formulas start with an equal sign. There's the name of the spreadsheet, the particular tab, exclamation point. They call those bang. They go bang, right? Bang, like you slam the door, bang, right? And then the range, or even one cell. So anyway, just a little knowledge for you, but we did change that from D to C. We're not done yet. I can click OK. I'm, I'm going to click OK, but we're not done yet. And I want to close this Format Act panel because it's just in the way. And, and I'm going to close the Alt Text panel. It's also in the way. So. As I look at this, it's a little better because we changed this from including this number of new jobs. So I don't have quite as much data to graph there. But it's still cluttered because those titles, you see them down here? Those titles are, are just all jammed together. And then we have our values going up and down here. Now, in the simulation, they simply had you click this button, switch row and, switch row and column. You can do that now if you'd like. You also saw that in the select data, that here's a switch. I kind of like to do it here because you're going to see, see this? They're going to move over here. And these are going to move over here. And that means that it's going to change the display of our graph. So kind of watch. I'm going to click this. See what happened? 
2019 is now this grouping of data. 2029 is now this grouping of data. And it's color coded each one of these job categories. This to me is a lot cleaner. Excel does a great job of guessing how you want that graph to display. If you find that you don't like it, I, I find that there's quite a few times where I need to, to click on this switch row and column. So it's nice to understand okay, what, you know, what it's doing. Look here, I'm going to switch it again. Do you see it switch back? Switch it again. There it goes. So it's basically taking my legend and it, it's converting that and putting it on the axis. Okay, so that's how we want it. I'm going to click OK and let me just make sure that was step 14. It looks like we did all parts. I'm going to save and let's go back to Word. That was step 14. Let me scroll down a little bit. We're getting close folks, only a few more steps. So step 15, you want to insert a new column so that you can insert some spark lines later. Spark lines, love spark lines. We're going to do this on the Outlook sheet and we're going to make a brand new column D and we're going to put a label for that called trends. So let's do that. I'm on the Outlook worksheet. I need to insert that column right on top of this one. So I'm going to put my mouse. Where do I put it, folks? Do I put it down here? No, I need to get it all the way up on top of that letter D. Don't be afraid. Don't be timid. Don't be like, eh. Right, get it all the way up on top of that letter D. Right click, insert. It scooted everything over. The graph is still correct because Excel knows to make updates. It, it gets that. Everything, all the data is still accurate. In D5, it told us to type trends. Enter. Save that. That was actually that entire step because we're getting ready to do some spark lines. Let's go back to the instructions. That was step 15. That was the whole thing. On to step 16. You want to insert spark lines to show the trends for 2019 and 2029. So we're going to select the range B6 through C12 and insert spark lines in the range D6 through D12. Okay. Display the markers on the spark lines. Okay, so we have some formatting that we need to do here. Now, notice it said we're going to select B6 through C12. Remember in Excel, this is kind of like a, a type of charting. We always select the data that we're going to chart. We select first. So let's go back to Excel. And what am I supposed to select again? I'm supposed to select B6 through C12. There we go. And kind of like charts, I'm going to insert. And I see my charts, but this isn't specifically a chart. If I continue, here's my spark lines. Now, this was actually a quiz question. Ooh, remember that? Click on line. We're going to do a spark line. Now, look what it did. It filled in for me what I'm going to graph. There's my data range. Now it's saying, where would you like me to put that? I'm moving this out of the way because with my insertion point flashing in that location range, I'm going to just tell it by selecting what I want. If you had started out by selecting cells D6 through D12 and they're obviously empty, it would have understood that to be the location range and then you would have filled in the data range. Excel is so smart. You're going to love it. Click OK. Look at that. Here's what I love about spark lines. Now we're going to keep formatting these and so I'm going to keep these selected. But can't you see that you could very quickly see that this, the trend for this one is upward. The trend for this one, downward, right? So very quickly at a glance. We don't always get that when we're looking at numbers. And by the way, spark lines are not restricted to just two columns of data. You could have 20 columns of data. You know, you could have a ton of data and you could say do a trend line and it, it actually might look more like they're showing in this style up here where it's up, down, up, down. And so it's just so much easier to digest. You get information from the data. Now let's see. We're not done yet because we've, we've done our spark lines, but it says we need to display markers on the spark lines. And um, so let's do that. We have our, our spark lines selected up here. 
See this? Markers. All sorts of things. Negative points, low points, only the first or last points, only high points or low points. So really great information that you can make pop out on these spark lines. But we're not done yet. It said we need to format these as dark blue, spark line style, dark number four. That sounds like a style. Okay, not that one. Here it is, one, two, three, fourth one over, dark blue, spark line style, dark number four. This one right here, see this one? So I clicked that. I don't know if you can see much of a change there. It is all blue now, but they said we're gonna make one more change. Change the marker color to dark red. So here's the marker color very specifically. And I can pick, do I want the high points to be green and the low points to be red? Well, I'm gonna do this for all the markers. And they actually said dark red, so make sure that you're on dark red. And see how my marker has changed? That's looking better already, isn't it? Save that. Let's go back to the instructions. And guess what? We're getting, I mean, we're almost at the end. Each spark line has its own start and stop values. We saw that, right, the two markers. To depict the data more accurately, you will adjust the minimum and maximum values on the axes. So we did make a little graph, didn't we? And what are the, what are the axes, right? We're not displaying those. That's a little problematic. We're going to see that. It says customize the spark lines by setting the vertical axis minimum to be all the same, the same for all spark lines. And we're going to set the vertical axis maximum to be the same for all spark lines. Here's what we're talking about. Let's go back to Excel. And look at some of these values here. Um, this one, this very first one, has increased. We can all agree with that. And I mean, just ballpark about 8,000. In fact, exactly 8,000, right? And it shows the exact same increase, the angle, in other words, is the same as, how about, uh, what about this one, computer systems analyst? That one's with, uh, if we go 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, nearly 80, this one's 50,000, it, it looks the same. The one above it, information security analyst, that one's what about 40,000, it looks the same as this one that's 8,000. So I can't get a good sense of the scale because each of these little bitty micrographs is on its own axis and the axes are all different. I need them to get in scale. So all of that explanation to say, do this, but I want you to know why you're doing this. I want you to look at that. Axis, here's the minimum. Notice here's the maximum. So I've got to do this twice. Same, right now it's automatic, based on each one is evaluated separately. Same for all spark lines, click it. Look at that, you see it already start to make some changes, but that was for the minimum point. I don't wanna do just the minimum, I wanna also do the maximum point. Now they're more proportional. So really when I look at this first one where there was only an 8,000 difference, I mean, you can see the line, it goes up, but very minimal. So for all 5% change, I mean, come on, that's very minimal growth, right? So in fact, let me click over there. So the line reflects, is almost no change. Um, what about this, well, the negative one, it goes down for sure. What about, well, the 20, this, is, this confuses me a little bit, I have to say, I'm not sure what's going on here. Um, the 22%, definitely looks like it's gone up 22%. Um, it must be because of the specific values. You know, this is this is 31%, but the values are down here at 131,000 and 171,000, whereas uh, this value, what is this, 146. Oh, and this is the, what values are this summing? Okay. Not sure what's going on there. Um, this this line to me looks like it should be, with 31%, it should be a little taller. But 
hopefully what you can see from this is that we're trying to make all these spark lines a little more reflective of the data. And it's much easier than looking at these individual data points and trying to do the math. Of course, we do have it um, over here, those calculations. So just another tool in the toolbox. Let's save that. Let's go back to our instructions. Guess what? We're at step 18. This always bring, makes me nervous because we'll see. Like I said, I have attempted this once and I did not pay diligent attention to the details. And so I got a bad score. I didn't get I, I, I passed, but not, I want 100. I want 100. Okay, so close those instructions. Save, 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 save. Close out of Excel. Get completely out of Excel. And I'm going to pause the video while I go into myitlab.com to submit. Turns out, folks, that my fall 2022 semester will still be submitting through myitlab.com. In the spring, you will be, if you're taking from spring 2023 and beyond, you will be using links inside of PAUSE to submit your work. So make sure you are following the appropriate steps for submitting your work. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to open up now so I can submit. So I'm ready to submit. I'm nervous. I'm going to click Choose File. Caution, caution, caution. I want you to make sure you are in the correct folder and that you are submitting the correct file. We have done so much work by this time. It's really easy to grab one of your Excel files from a previous chapter. So double, triple check. It is really a common error. I have done it myself, so please be very careful. Click on Open. Click on Upload. Look for that successful upload. And that's when the nerves kick in, because now I'm going to have to submit for grading. I just kind of let that sit there, because when it's done, it will close it. There we go. <gasps> Yay! I knew if I truly paid attention that I could do this correctly. It's so easy. Like I said, I like to be creative, and so I want to click and explore. You may have the same thing, and in kind of real world, you could do that experimentation and, and you know make something that's really great. But we know for this assignment, we have to follow the details. So <clears throat> let's view submission. This is where I reveal my soul because I know that you all thought I was perfect. I know you don't think that. None of us are perfect. I hope you don't think that. None of us are perfect. So if, like me, you made some mistakes the first time, remember to go through and submit again. Now, when I looked at my mistakes, I'm going to click this submission. What I realized as I looked at the scorecard was, I mean, look at this. This is embarrassing. Look at all this stuff. And as I started to go through, I, re I was working on the wrong graph at one point. I just didn't change to the correct uh, spreadsheet. So, I mean, there were just things. And I realized that I had enough errors that fixing it would just uh, be hard for you all to follow. It just wouldn't have made sense. So I decided to redo it. That being said, look at the timestamp on this video, folks. And you can see about how long it will take you to go through the video through the assignment, okay? So, you know, maybe you're faster than I am, but it gives you a gauge of the time that you need. Now, don't forget, if you want, you can click this live comments report. It will download this document into, or this Excel spreadsheet, into your downloads file, you can, or folder. You can open that, and ooh, I mean, ooh, that's tragic. Don't look at that. That's embarrassing. And But anyway, you can go through, and it will try to point out to you I mean, and with graphs, it's kind of hard because it can't put the little uh, notes like it does with the formulas. For, for the previous chapter, it was great, right? But anyway, so you can go through and look. This one wasn't quite as good. I need to look at that submissions markup page, and it's trying to tell me. Don't look at that. It's terrible. It's embarrassing. My perfection, my perfect reputation is, is tarnished now. Anyway, just remember that that is there. But... For me, with the graphs, I find with these charts, I'm sorry, with these charts in particular, that once you get off, sometimes you just have to start over. So don't be afraid to do that to support your learning, but you do have the tools. 
you've got the simulations that will help. You have my guided video. Remember that Pearson has a video, a very comprehensive video, that also explains this. So I hope all these resources are supporting your learning to support your success in the class and beyond. Thank you, folks. I appreciate you very much. Bye.